on behalf of the Indian Academy of Sciences, I have great pleasure in welcoming you all to the 28th media meeting of the Academy. chairperson and friends. Now I am going to speak about thrombus. Now thrombus we know that uh, it is something, a mass inside the blood vessel. It forms and it occludes the blood flow. It can cause serious havoc in our system. Uh, like it can cause heart attack, it can cause stroke. Anybody beyond 50 or approaching 50 is indeed afraid of formation of a small bolus of thrombus inside the blood vessel. We cannot prevent it, but we can try to treat it. We can lyse the thrombus, or as I wrote, we can kill the thrombus. And there are many ways, and I shall dwell on the system that we have created to break the thrombus in this study. Now, what is the thrombus? It has two components. I think uh, the young people that are sitting here, they will be very much uh, understanding this thing also. Thrombus, is a, it has a major protein component. It is a protein which becomes insoluble. Originally, this protein, which is fibrinogen, it is present in a very large quantity in our blood. All the time, we have around 300 milligram of fibrinogen soluble in our blood, 100 ml of blood. It is a quite a large amount. It is a highly thrombogenic protein, but it becomes soluble. It, becomes, it remains soluble. It creates problem once it becomes insoluble by conversion into fibrinogen converted into fibrin by a proteolytic cleavage by a serine protease known as thrombin. I shall show the cartoon for that. So this is one of the main component of the, this insoluble mass within the blood vessel. And the second component is aggregated platelets. Platelets are very highly sensitive cells. Once they get stimulated, they will form a macroscopic mass. And such a huge mass, you can see the mass. And along with the fibrin, they are enough. They are enough to block an artery or a vein. OK? Now in this uh, uh, picture, this is the same picture, scanning electron micro picture. It can give a semblance. Here it is the RBC. Big one is the RBC, it's a trapped within the thrombus, and these are the platelets. The platelets, you see, they extend phyloporia, and uh, together they form an aggregate. And here in this uh, schematic diagram, you see that this is a blood vessel, and these threads are fibrin strain. They have become insoluble now. They are no more soluble. And within these uh, yellow ones, they are the platelets which are aggregated. They make a uh, clump there. And these are huge ones are the RBCs. Okay, how to, uh, how to treat them then? So naturally there are two components, so you have to tackle uh, two treatment methods. One will be to break the fibrin, okay? You lyse the fibrin by using several enzymes. You in, when the patient is having an acute MI or something, something, the doctor will uh, infuse drugs like streptokinase or artiflase, et cetera, into the bloodstream, and this, Protein, uh, these proteolytic enzymes will break, proteolyze the fibrin. Of course, the second option would be to prevent platelet aggregation, or if the aggregation is there, to prevent further uh, increase in aggregation by giving drugs like aspirin, et cetera, which blocks cyclooxygenase. Uh, these are ADP receptor. So there are many groups of drugs. There are two types of treatments, of course. I shall dwell on these fibrinolytic drugs. How uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages, how to overcome the disadvantage. There is a huge disadvantage using the fibrinolytic drugs. The disadvantage is that 
this therapy is associated with serious, literally serious bleeding complications. Because if you give streptokinase, it will go to thrombus site, but it will act throughout your body. Okay? You are not targeting it. You cannot target it. So it will prevent any thrombus formation at any other place. We need thrombus formation for our survival also. It is known as hemostasis. There is a term hemostasis and thrombosis. If it is good for health, we call it hemostasis. If it is bad for health, we call it a pathological, it is a thrombus formation. Okay? Every time, suppose I just strike like this, many capillaries will be broken and many blood will be oozed. And this blood flow, without my knowledge, they must be sealed by formation of thrombus there. Now, uh, these fibrinolytic drugs will prevent that. They can cause serious bleeding complications. Always the physician should be there around to see that how much is given, more given, less given. People, if you don't die of heart attack, you may die of bleeding. Okay. Now, this is the textbook knowledge. Just I want to re uh, refresh your knowledge. Here you see that this is the fibrinogen. This is a uh, fibrillar structure. There are two alpha, two beta, and two gamma chains. So six chains in total. Now, all the end terminals ends at, at the center. Alpha, beta, gamma this side. Alpha, beta, gamma this side. End terminal, they club together by uh, disulfide linkages. And the C terminals are the other ends, OK? Now, once you add a proteolytic enzyme like thrombin, what it will do, it will keep the small 10 to 15 amino acid fragments, very small. Once it will release this small fragments known as fibrinopeptide A or fibrinopeptide B, what remains becomes insoluble. It is no more soluble. Okay? Why? Because these ex newly exposed end terminals have glycine, uh, uh, yeah, glycine, proline, hydrophobic amino acids, they will form uh, polymerize, they will induce a polymerization. It will be apparent in the next, next one. So it is a fibrin and, a, sorry, fibrinogen. Then there is a thrombin cleavage. Now there is spontaneous polymerization. One fibrin strand will polymerize and club together to another by non-covalent bonds, okay? And they will form an insoluble, you mark the word insoluble. Now it has a clot, nascent clot has formed. Okay, within I think one to two minutes if you are thrombin. And later on, later on, they, they will be stabilized by uh, transglutaminase. There is a covalent bond formation by factor 13, one of the clotting factor. Now, how we treat this thrombus? This is the thrombus. How we treat it? Now, as I told you, there is a fibrinolytic drugs with the proteolytic enzymes. They will cleave at different sites and make it small fragments, and they will be dispersed. The clot will be lysed by uh, drugs like streptokinase. Our idea here, because of the off-target effect, we thought that because here there is a no covalent bond, can heat by giving heat, can they be separated? You just remember DNA melting. Just separate protein DNA by heat. By giving heat, this weak non-covalent forces may break the and individual fibrin strands may be separated out. So this could be vulnerable for thrombal ablation. And once these strands will be separated, remember they are within the blood vessel by the flow of blood. Once the fibrin strands are peeled off, they were taken off, washed off from the lesion site, sorry, washed off from the lesion site, and they are removed from that position, okay? With this idea, now the question is how you give the heat, how you generate heat inside the body. Now we came to the idea which is already in vogue. It is a photothermal therapy. The principle is that you take some of the nanomaterials which are NIR active like gold nanorods or graphene. And, and if you irradiate with NIR laser 800 to 1100 nanometer, we did it with 808 nanometer, it will generate heat. And this idea is already in vogue, okay? And this has been used to kill the cancer cells. You target the gold nanorods to the cancer tissue in the mouse, they will home towards the cancer cells. From outside, you give an IR laser, they will generate local heat. There should be other anti-cancer treatment, of course. 
And together, it can, especially for solid cancer, it can kill the cancer cell. We took this idea from here. It has never been used for any other purpose. So in our system, what we did that, here we took the, we formed a clot. This is a clot with gold nanorods. We put it in the sample tube. This is a laser we reflected into the tube. So this is reflected. And with a thermal camera, you measure the temperature, how much temperature increases there. In a good, hypo, our hypothesis that with this heat, this clot will be rarefied. Clot will be rarefied. And we did exactly that. And uh, this is a uh, well-known experiment. It is not ours. If you take the gold nanorods and at different concentrations, if we irradiate with gold uh, nanorods laser, the temperature will increase. You see that temperature with can increase of 70 degree. You can measure with infrared camera. Just a, in the test tube, just simple gold nanorods, nothing else. You irradiate nanorods laser, it will become very hot. And uh, this is the temperature, okay. Now this is our experiment. What we did that, we generated clot in a test tube, put gold nanorod, and irradiate with NIR laser for around 45 minutes or something like that. And we use different assays that is possible in the literature. One is turbidimetry assay, and uh, one is suppose in the clot, this is a clot, we put RBC inside the clot. Then as the heat will be there, some RBC will be liberated to the supernatant. We measure the supernatant. Here we trapped methylene blue dye in the clot, as there will be heat, this will be methylene blue dye will be liberated to a supernatant. We again measure the supernatant at a certain wavelength. We take fluorescent fibrinogen, Alexa 488 level fibrinogen, made a clot and put, heat it up and in the supernatant some fluorescence will be liberated, we measure that. So by different methods we did and you see that the extent of lysis of the clot around 20 to 30 percent, not more. Then we reason that this is not doing. It should be more. We reason that it is in the test tube. If there is a depolymerization of the clot, there will maybe repolymerization. Both the reactions are taking place. But in our body, it is not doing. Body, there is a flow of blood. So we thought that this system does not represent the physiological system. Then we made another experimental setup. In this, we take a parallel flow chamber in which is a, uh, in the, uh, this is the fluorescently leveled fibrinogen. We coated a cover slip with the fluorescently leveled fibrinogen, allow fluid to pass either as venous shear, which is 500 inverse sec second, or a arterial shear, which is nearly 1500 to 1800 inverse second, and we flow it over that. And we measured by fluorescence microscopy, uh, by confocal, we found that there are huge gaps there, and you can see that by this shear, under the fluid shear, that can increase arterial shear up to 50 percent. That's good. So that this is, this is possible. So next we did a FRAP a fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching experiment. Here, we, this is a fluorescent fibrin strand. We take Alexa 48 level fluorescent fibrin. We bleach it, and you see that this region is bleached. The idea is that if the, by heating the uh, fluorescent fibrin is mobile, it is then uh, become free and mobile, it will fill up the gap. You see that with time in the D, you see it has filled up the gap here. Somehow some recovery has been there. So you can see this is a faster recovery. So it shows that with this FRAP experiment as well. So there is a, if you give, uh, this system is working and clot is melting. There is a thrombolysis. So now going to the animal system. These are all experiment, laboratory experiment. Going to the animal system, this is the ideal, our focus in the ideal goal. Here you see that this is a blood vessel. You generate a thrombus. Half gold nano, yellow ones are gold nanorods target towards that. Irradiate with NR laser. In an ideal system, this, this will break with the heat and this will flow with the flow of the blood. So with the thrombolysis, blood flow will be restored. That is our experiment. So in the next experiment, we did that exactly. We took a mouse and we exposed the femoral, superficial femoral vein of the mouse, and we induced, a, if you put perichloride locally, they will, they will form a thrombus. We induced a thrombus in the locally here. Now, we took gold nanorod, we coated gold nanorod, conjugated gold nanorod with antifibrin antibody, right? And this antifibrin antibody, we injected to the coral vein. So 
this gold nanorod will enter into the bloodstream, it won't be off target effect like streptokinase. Because it is coated with antifibrin antibody, it will go where fibrin is there, right? And then, and then from outside, this is opened up, we outside the NIR laser, and we measure how much blood flow is there or restored. And that we measure by Doppler uh, scan, by a spectral, Doppler spectral, color Doppler spectral scan. So you can see that, I can just a uh, uh, little bit educate you about this. Uh, we took two mouse, you look at the pulse. This pulse shows that blood flow is there in the femoral vein, in the two mouse. In the second experiment, we prepared a thrombus. Now thrombus, you see that there is no, this, this oscillation is lost. That shows that the blood flow is stopped. You look at the, this. In the, both the mouse, blood flow is stopped due to thrombus. Now the experiment starts. In one, it continues like this. Second one, we irritate with NIR laser. You see that blood flow is restored. So this experiment shows that it can be happen in the animal model, in a physiological setup. Okay, so I should be very quick now. So then we ask that whether this can syner synergize with streptokinase therapy. We cannot ignore streptokinase therapy, it should be there. This is a new concept. So we told that let us take streptokinase very low dose, which is not dangerous. Whether that can synergize with this. So, so here we did the same experiment, took two mouse, blood flow is there. We created the thrombus, blood flow is lost. In first mouse, we gave a streptokinase by very low dose. Pulse remains lost. Now, once you see, you know, we give NIR laser along with the streptokinase, there is a supplementation effect and blood flow is restored. So it works. So we did the same thing with the histopathology. These are, you see that when is uh, filled with clot, now laser, it is, uh, it is uh, removed. Same thing, okay. So this is the take home lesson. A photothermal therapy targeted, it is targeted therapy, and there is a two more subtreatment, chemotherapy as well as photothermal therapy, so it is a multimodal uh, treatment. And uh, so uh, we published it last year in Nano Research, and this uh, patent has already been filed for this. Uh, this is my group, and uh, this is the boy Nitesh who has just submitted a thesis last, uh, defended thesis uh, last week, so he did the major job for this. And these are the uh, funding agencies which funded this. And this is the Ghat of Banaras. Thanks. <laughs>
so atherosclerotic trump is a little bit of far away artist uh, professor dash is this a photothermal effect real or is it also a photochemical approach only photothermal are no? these photo uh, are these pulse lasers or cw these are uh, uh, I, uh, these are pulse i am not an expert on that what is a pulse or otherwise are these kind of continuous lasers or pulse lasers i think continuous it is in my paper. I shall tell you. Just because the intensity later. dependence may be there. Uh, it is um, I, that I am not uh, very much. Uh, I know there are two types. What? Uh, 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 Streptokinase is not kinase in the form of phosphorylation. It is a proteolytic enzyme, serine protease. Yeah, I don't know why, why you have to see Google. Okay. A very good question. Somebody also asked also here. So uh, here, uh, uh, if you give uh, the 70 degree will reach depending on how much gold nanorod will accumulate at that site. But here a targeting it gold nanorod accumulation to the site is not that much and there is a blood flow. So temperature is dissipated by blood flow. We got it 40 degree, 40 to 45. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. There are many. Yeah.